through mechanical advantage. I'll be showing some things, some knots, and how to set a rope, how to set a quarter out. I've got other videos on those, and you can see the link below to check out those videos if you're not sure how to do some of them. I set a rope in this tree here, and if you, if you don't know how to set a rope in a tree from the ground, I got a video on that. You need to refer back to that video. So I'm going to use a block and tackle first to show. I set a porter wrap on that tree. I've also got a video on how to set a porter wrap. I'm going to use a block and tackle. I'm going to tie a clem high hitch right here for a friction knot. If you're not sure how to tie a clem high hitch, I got a video on that you can watch. Set and dress it. I'm going to hook my block and tackle up right here. Side you pull from, this is a five to one block and tackle. Side you pull from will go this direction. If I hook it up backwards, I'd only have a four to one. So, I'm gonna hook it to the top of my quarter wrap right here. Clip the carabiner to the top of my quarter wrap. I've wrapped the rope off in the quarter wrap and filled the drum completely. So, when I pull, the block and tackle, it gives me slack in this part of my rope. If I pull the block and tackle all the way to, I can take up the slack. I don't want to trust the block and tackle to pull on. I can take up the slack in the quarter wrap on my main rope. And that will be the setup for a five to one block and tackle. Mechanical advantage is huge in tree work. It's, it's one of the most important things I think you need to learn. Um, there's no limit to how much you can pull, only a limit to the strength of your hardware. So I'm gonna explore that a little bit today with, with other ways of doing it. That was a real simple way with a block and tackle, but let's, let's take it a step farther. Okay, now I'm going to show a two to one in a pyramid technique, meaning I'm just going to anchor this side off and pull with this side, which gives me a two to one ratio because when I pull this side, it pulls equally on the anchor point. We'll demonstrate that, and I'll show how you can do that and combine the lap technique with the pyramid technique to gain a lot of mechanical advantage fast with little hardware. Simply come over here. I'll just tie a running bow in here. Set the dress. Now, this side's anchored off. When I pull this side, it pulls equally on that side. See how it gives me a pyramid this way? And that's why we call it a pyramid technique because it makes a pyramid look there. That gives me a two to one ratio. So a 200 pound man pulls here with all his weight, puts 200 pounds of pressure on the anchor point, which puts 400 pounds of pressure on the load. So that's a simple two to one. Okay, so now if I'm going to turn that into a 10 to 1, I come to the pull side of the 2 to 1. Take up my slack, and I'll just simply tie me another friction hitch here. Tie another Clem Heist. Um, and remember, on the Clem Heist, the harder you're going to pull, the more wraps you need. And dress that. Okay, now I can take my block and tackle, which is the lap technique of mechanical advantage. And when I pull here, I'm pulling a two to one with a five to one ratio, 
which gives me a 10 to 1 because by anchoring that one off, it compounds the load. So conventionally, if I wanted to do it all on a lap technique and I wanted to do a 10 to 1, I'd need 9 points. And I'd have to have a really long rope to lap it up 9 times. This gives me a 10 to 1 using a pulley here and a block and tackle. So we're always, we can't always have a ton of gear in our trucks, but it's ways of thinking, let's be able to pull a heavy load without, with a limited amount of gear. Okay, now I'm gonna show a four to one. And like I said, we're doing a pyramid technique because I have an armorist block here, got a pulley there. Like I said, I might not have all the gear that it would take, but every time I add a rope, if I just anchor, simply anchor the rope off in the pyramid technique, I compound my load. I mean, I compound my pull. So I come back over here. Everything's adjustable, so as I pull the load over, I can stop, take it up in the pointer wrap, slide everything back up and go again. If I didn't make it adjustable, I would be limited to where I tied the pulleys on. I may have a long way to pull something, so I don't wanna limit myself. Here we're talking about trees. You can have a heavy bend and things that you need to go a long ways before you get it committed. So that's a four to one using the pyramid technique. A two to one with a two to one connected to it, if you compounds it makes it a four to one. So, next I'll show a 20 to 1. Now off the 4 to 1, if I just simply hook a 5 to 1 blocking tackle, I'll have to be very careful here not to pull over my tree. Um, 4 to 1, it was here. I hook up 5 to 1 to the blocking tackle. Well, remember, anything I hook to this pull side is compounded by this. So five times four is 20. This is a 20 to one, just using two pulleys and a preset block and tackle. 20 to one ratio is a huge ratio. Pulling trees especially. I've got a video that proves these systems work with using scales to show us exactly how much pull I get for pull out, effort I put into it. So remember my bull rope here is the strength of my Thing. As I pull, I would take a, the pull in, in the porter wrap. Keep everything nice and neat here. Pull, I can slide my knots back up because it, these are all clem heights. I could use diesels or other friction knots. But I need to know the strength of all my rigging. I need to know the strength of my rope to make sure I don't accidentally break something. And it graduates down. So I only use my large ropes to start with and graduate smaller ropes if need be. So by knowing my strengths and the amount of pull I need to put on something, this is endless. I could, I could put a pulley here, dead another rope off in the pyramid technique with just three pulleys. That would give me a six to one. Hook a block and tackle to that, five times six is 30. I'd have a 30 to one. So I can continue to put pull as required on my load that I'm pulling. There is a danger in that of barber chair in the tree, and I'll show you a way to prevent that now in just a second. When you're talking about pulling a tree with a lot of pull, like a 20 to one or a 10 to one, the putting the rope at the top provides the most leverage, but it also causes the tree to bend, which makes an arc, which can cause it to barber chair. So we're gonna discuss how to prevent that. Now, some people's theory is to just barely pre-tension the rope, but if I have a long, slim tree, when I start to make my back cut, if I wait to make enough back cut to keep it, prevent it from barber chairing, if it sets back on my chainsaw, then I create an arc here, which creates a lot of energy in the apex of the arc, which can still split my tree and make things go badly. So, I do not want to put a heavy ratio in the tip top of that tree for pull. 
But let me show you how to prevent the tree from splitting or something going very wrong. So we're pretending this fishing pole is a tree here. So I would stagger ropes down the tree and I would put my heaviest ratio, um, running bowling, I would stagger my ratio of pull down the tree. So my heaviest pull would be lower on the tree, and my lighter pull would be higher on the tree. So now, if I was pulling a heavy leaning tree, and a very, I had to get it to come this way. I didn't want to create too much energy when I cut what caused the tree to split. I might put a five to one on this section. I may put a 10 to one on this section, depending on the size of the tree and the length of the tree, and a 20 to one on this section. So when I pull, I don't get the same arc, and each rope, each rope is responsible for what's below it, not the other part of it. So this top rope is only pulling from here to here. This rope is pulling from here to here, and this is pulling the rest of the base of the tree. So I'll put my heaviest ratio down here, say like a 20 to one, 10 to one here, and a five to one here. I also want it to be progressive, but I want to put enough tension in these ropes so my tree is stable before I start my cuts but not so much that I'm gonna still split the tree. So I would get the tree pulled, then I would come down here and make a notch, make a little bit of back cut, then we would pull, cut, and pull, and commit the tree over. Using three different ropes for a heavy ratio or a heavy leaning tree.